Item number, SCP-318. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-318 is to be kept in the center of a chamber at least 5 meters by 8 meters by 5 meters, resting on a hydraulic lift to allow examination of the underside of the device. The door to this chamber is to be kept locked at all times, with access codes available to any level 3 or higher staff, with access by personnel of level 2 clearance or below, requiring approval from at least one level 4 staff member. Instances of SCP-3181 are to be kept completely wound, except during testing, and stored in secure item storage. Unrolling or communicating with SCP-3181 is prohibited outside testing, and all personnel interacting with SCP-3181 are to be subjected to regular psychiatric evaluations, until at least one month after the most recent interaction. Description SCP-318 appears similar to a small version of a crude rotary printing press, with a great deal of additional machinery attached at various locations. The device is composed primarily of a variety of hardwoods, with metallic parts made from brass, bronze, cast or wrought iron, copper, steel, and aluminum. SCP-318 in its entirety is approximately 3.5 meters wide. 6 meters long, and 2 meters tall. A more complete physical description can be found in Addendum 3182. When a living human, or a human cadaver that has been dead less than 6 hours, is placed in the input box and the lid closed, SCP-318 activates, using an undetermined power source. Cameras placed inside with test subjects have not been recovered but video transmitted prior to their destruction shows data expunged, with the vocalizations of conscious subjects audible to observers outside the box. During the process, lids of both boxes lock in place, such that any force sufficient to open them would likely also cause significant damage to SCP-318. Tests using this level of force are currently awaiting approval. SCP-318 remains active for approximately 5 minutes per use, with exact time seemingly dependent upon the body mass and physical condition of the subject. After SCP-318 ceases activity, all covers unlock, the test subject is no longer present in the input box, and a scroll, designated SCP-3181, is present in the output box. SCP-3181 takes the form of a strip of paper 7 inches or 17.8 centimeters wide and 2 feet 60.1 centimeters long, wrapped around a black enameled wooden dowel 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters in diameter and 8 inches 20.3 centimeters long. The dowel and paper appear entirely normal, though testing reveals the presence of human DNA, matching that of converted subject present in the paper. This scroll contains the memories and consciousness of the test subject, who is able to communicate when SCP-3181 is at least partially unrolled, by causing drawings and or writing to appear on the paper. These marks only appear on the side of the paper that faces inward when rolled up, and are generally consistent with the penmanship and artistic ability of the subject, though the quality of drawings improves markedly when SCP-3181 can see what it is depicting. Subjects stored on instances of SCP-3181 report the ability to feel the scroll as if it were their body, expressing a corresponding form of pain when the paper is cut, torn, burned, data expunged, or otherwise distressed. Significant damage appears to render SCP-3181 inoperative in some way, as once the scroll is damaged beyond a certain extent, Generally the compromise of at least 1% of the paper's surface, subjects are unresponsive and display no further activity. It is currently unknown whether this is because the copy of the subject has been destroyed or because their mode of communication has been cut off. In addition, so long as SCP-3181 is at least partially unrolled, subjects are apparently able to perceive their environment, visually and orally, with an acuity consistent with an average human adult. Requests for testing on blind and or deaf subjects are currently pending approval. Personas stored on instances of SCP-3181 respond as would be expected from the original subject, and have full access to the subject's memory, 
as well as a complete memory of their time stored on SCP-3181. They are unable to exert any direct influence on objects or personnel, and though they can make requests of a reader, the reader is under no obligation or compulsion to accede to these requests. Testing has shown no mimetic properties in writings or drawings on SCP-3181, and subjects do not appear to be more persuasive than they were while alive. However, some staff have, through prolonged interaction, displayed sympathy towards SCP-3181 subjects. Such individuals should be transferred to non-sentient SCP items, or terminated if a transfer is not feasible. Addendum 3181 SCP-318 was recovered by Foundation agents on date undisclosed, and stories of a Library of the Ancestors caught the attention of Dr. who was vacationing nearby. Investigation revealed an isolated monastery containing both SCP-318 and several hundred instances of SCP-3181. Both the press and the scrolls were taken into Foundation custody, along with a number of other suspicious items, none of which have yet proven anomalous. The monks questioned and terminated and the monastery destroyed. Local news reports the following day reflected the accidental fire which claimed the lives of all its inhabitants, as well as their extensive collection of antiques. Efforts are ongoing to determine whether any instances of SCP-3181 remain in existence outside Foundation custody. Addendum 3182 some parts of SCP-318 appear to be significantly older than others, with the aluminum parts clearly manufactured in modern times, while carbon dating has placed some of the wooden components to before the 10th century CE. It is currently unknown whether the more recent parts were installed to replace broken parts, or whether they are part of some sort of modification on the original design. The presumably oldest, and possibly original parts, are distributed throughout the device, suggesting that its overall age is at least 1100 years. Despite the fact that this predates the first known appearance of several elements of its design by centuries. The modifications present in SCP-318 compared to a normal rotary press are extensive, and a full listing of these can be found in Those with the greatest known relevance are as follows. In place of the hopper that would normally feed paper into a press of this design, there is a large section of machinery, comprising almost half of the total size of SCP-318, including a hinged lidded box constructed of oak, bearing a bronze plaque displaying the word Materia, and has interior dimensions of approximately 1.83 meters, 6 feet long, and 0.91 meters, or 3 feet square. A second box one-eighth the dimensions of the first, to six significant figures, is located where the output would normally be on a press of similar design, and bears a plaque reading Sententia. Discoloration of the wood around each plaque indicates that they may not be original. The components which would normally transfer ink and water to their respective rollers are absent, with several cloth and leather hoses running to the materia box. Testing of the roller surfaces for residues has thus far been inconclusive. Addendum 3183 Work is currently underway to catalog the recovered SCP-3181 for selected interview excerpts and stimulus test results. See the following experiment log 318. Note: Interviews were conducted by unrolling samples of SCP-3181 and placing the open scroll on a table in view of a video camera. See Video Archive 3182 for original interview footage. All interviews in this document have been translated into modern English for ease of reading. Only excerpts of the selected interviews are presented here. For complete transcripts, see Document 318 Interviewer Dr. J Date Undisclosed Interview Subject SCP-318-127 Original language, Latin. Notes. Subject's responses are in good quality penmanship, in a style typical of 13th century European writings. Begin interview log. SCP-3181-27. I see I have been moved. 
Where is this place? Who are you? Dr. J. You can call me Dr. J. Please state your name for the record. SCP-318-127. Pleased to meet you. Dr. J. And when were you born? SCP-318-127. I was born in the year of our Lord 12 and was consigned to this form 28 years later. Dr. J. You say you were consigned to this form. Were you still alive when you were converted by SCP-318? SCP-318-127. Of course. Were I otherwise, my soul would not have been present to be stored thus. Dr. J. Can you describe the conversion process, from your perspective? SCP-318-127. I have some memory of those events, but it is both jumbled and exceptionally unpleasant. I would prefer to speak on a different subject. Dr. J. Please describe your recollections of the conversion process. SCP-318-127. May we speak about something else, please? How much time has passed since I was last opened? Dr. J. If you do not answer the question, we will take whatever means are necessary to ensure your further compliance. SCP-318-127. Very well. As the lid of the materia box closed, data expunged. Dr. J. That was interesting. Thank you. SCP-318-127. What events have transpired of late in the world? My previous caretakers would keep me abreast of recent happenings. Dr. J. I am afraid that is all the time we have allotted for this interview. Perhaps next time. End log. Interviewer. Dr. H. Date. Undisclosed. Interview subject. SCP-318-112. Original language. Archaic Japanese. Dialect and calligraphy consistent with 16th century. Begin interview log. SCP-318-112. Thank you. It is good to see and hear again. Dr. H. Please explain. Why couldn't you see or hear? SCP-318-112. You don't know? No. You're not one of our regular caretakers. And this isn't our home. Where am I? Who are you? And how did I get here? Dr. H. You can call me Dr. H. And this is a research facility. Unfortunately, the monastery at which you previously resided was destroyed by a fire, with no survivors, save on scrolls, like yourself, which we recovered for preservation and study. Now, why couldn't you see or hear? SCP-318-112 When we are rolled up, we are cut off from the world outside. For short periods, it can be quite peaceful and relaxing but it gets quite lonely if it goes on too long. I have gone a long time without being opened, and it was quite a relief to finally reconnect to the world. Dr. H. I believe I understand. So, does the extent to which you are enrolled impact your ability to see and hear? SCP-318-112. Not in my experience. Dr. H. Thank you, 12. You have been most helpful. I look forward to our next interview. SCP-318-112. Please, don't close me yet. You just opened me. I want to see. Please don't clo- Further text is not visible from this point, as Dr. H finished rolling up SCP-318-112. End log. Interviewer. Dr. F. Date. Undisclosed. Interview subject. SCP-318-1135. Formerly D-5- Original language. Modern French. Begin interview log. Dr. F. Please describe what you currently see, hear, feel, taste, and smell. SCP-3181-135. Expletive expunged. Dr. F. Please answer the question, 135. SCP-3181-135. Or you'll do what? Kill me again. Go ahead, you expletive expunged. Dr. F. As the subject is not complying with requests, I will now proceed to direct stimulus testing. D2. Please bring that cart over here. 
a cart is wheeled into the camera's field of view, containing a number of objects including sandpaper, a long barbecue lighter, a pair of scissors, a scalpel, graduated pipettes, several beakers containing liquids including water, ink, nitric acid, data expunged, and a roll of paper towels. Dr. F picks up a sheet of 100 grit sandpaper. SCP-3181-135 Ooh, a cart! Real scary. Sandpaper? What's that? Dr. F. Abrasion test. Dr. F proceeds to rub the sandpaper against SCP-3181-135 for approximately 5 seconds. SCP-3181-135 Ow! Hey! Expletive expunged. Dr. F. Please describe the sensation you just experienced. SCP-3181-135 Rub that expletive expunged. Sandpaper on your- Expletive expunged. And tell me how it feels. Dr. F returns sandpaper to cart, retrieves a pair of small alligator clips connected to an adjustable power source. Dr. F Subject compares sensation to application of sandpaper to genital area. SCP-3181-135 It's an expression, you sick! Expletive expunged. Dr. F attaches the alligator clips to opposite edges of SCP-3181-135. Note. In the interests of brevity, further stimulus testing is summarized in the stimulus testing log at the bottom of this document. End log. Interviewer. Dr. F. Date. Undisclosed. Interview subject. SCP-3181-138. Originally D-4... Original language. Interviewer's speech is modern English. Subject was illiterate and communicated through images. Possibly due to the subject's cognitive handicaps, these images were generally poorly rendered, resembling a child's drawing. Begin interview log. Dr. F. Greetings, 138. How are you feeling? SCP-3181-138. Smiley face image. Dr. F. Good, good. I'm going to perform some brief tests to see how you respond to different things. SCP-3181-138 Crude image of a smiling stick figure wearing a lab coat, carrying an Erlenmeyer flask in one hand, and what appears to be SCP-3181-138 in the other. Dr. F Yes, quite. Dr. F applied 0.5 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid near one corner of SCP-3181-138. SCP-3181-138 Chaotic scribbles, composed largely of jagged lines. Dr. F applies 0.5 milliliters of concentrated sodium hydroxide solution near one corner of SCP-3181-138. Dr. F May I have your reaction? SCP-3181-138 After approximately 15 second delay, an image of a human fist making an obscene gesture. End log. Stimulus testing log. Interviewer. Dr. F. Subject. SCP-3181-135. Stimulus applied. 100 grit sandpaper. Applied vigorously for 5 seconds. Subject response. Subject expressed significant discomfort and described sensation as corresponding to abrasion by sandpaper on bare skin. Interviewer Dr. F Subject SCP-3181-135 Stimulus applied Electrical stimulation, both direct and alternating current, at a variety of settings. Subject response Subject initially reported no sensation, other than the pressure of the electrode clips. As current and voltage were raised, subject reported a mild tingling sensation, which was replaced with a burning sensation whenever the electrical stimulation significantly raised the temperature of the paper. Note, some of the applied shocks were severe enough to cause considerable pain in a living human. Apparently, the subject experiences sensations based on their effect upon paper rather than on how they would affect human flesh. Interviewer Dr. F. Subject. 
SCP-3181-135. Stimulus applied. Impact by steel hammer. Applied three times to the unrolled section of SCP-3181-135. Subject response. Subject reports brief feelings of pressure, but no significant discomfort. Interviewer. Dr. F. Subject. SCP-3181-135. Stimulus applied. Fire from a commercially produced butane barbecue lighter applied briefly to one corner of the subject and extinguished promptly. Subject response. During stimulation, subject produced largely incoherent words, scattered haphazardly. Penmanship during this period was significantly degraded, rendering many words illegible. Afterward, subject reported continued pain, comparing the experience to having a body extremity set on fire. Note: While the level of discomfort could be useful in inducing compliance and defiant subjects, a less destructive method would be desirable. Interviewer: Dr. F. Subject: SCP-3181-135. Stimulus applied. Water. Two applications of 0.5 milliliters each, applied to area scorched in previous test and to a section of undamaged paper. Subject response. Subject reports a numbing sensation in the areas soaked by water, and words and drawings attempted in these areas are badly faded and distorted. As water dries, subject reports sensation returning, but that the burned area does not return to prior levels of discomfort. Note: An interesting result. Water appears to act as an anesthetic. Further testing is indicated. Interviewer: Dr. F. Subject: SCP-3181-135. Stimulus applied. Water. Subject completely saturated. Subject response. Subject becomes unresponsive and remains totally unresponsive under any stimuli after paper is thoroughly dried. Note: It would appear that SCP-3181-135 may have experienced the equivalent of death by anesthetic overdose. Interviewer: Dr. T. Subject: SCP-3181-136 and SCP-3181-140. Stimulus applied. Both subjects unrolled and placed in stands 1 meter apart with their writing surfaces facing each other. Subject response: Subjects engage in conversation with each other using characters approximately 2 cm tall. Addendum 3184 Requests to use SCP-3182 to enable final debriefing of sufficiently recently deceased Foundation personnel are currently pending approval. Requests to use SCP-3182 to interview test subjects killed by memetic SCPs is denied. Addendum 3185 Additional resources and personnel have been requested for the translation and cataloging of SCP-3181, as several recent interviews with SCP-3181 subjects have yielded useful information about certain SCP objects, including data expunged. Some interviews have also indicated the possible existence of previously unknown SCPs, one of which, SCP, has since been located and contained. It should be noted that a number of the leads produced through interviews of SCP-3181 subjects have proven to be fabrications, and all information obtained from SCP-3181 should be considered suspect. In spite of this, it is the belief of this researcher that there may be much to be gained in questioning all SCP-3181 about other potential SCP objects. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, Go watch SCP-317, Cretaceous Physicist, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.